Denver 7's Jennifer Kowaleski is hearing from the people who make the decisions and the ones impacted by them. Jen? And it's Shannon, a lot goes into this decision. Now, each district superintendent ultimately makes the call. Denver Public Schools says that the record low temperature impact whether to close school or to have a delayed start. Because as you mentioned, they just don't want kids to be waiting for the bus in those single digit temperatures simply because it's not safe to do so. Now, schools were put in. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a snow day tomorrow because it's still snowing. It's forecasted to snow and they called it midway through the day today. As with temperatures being as cold as they are, are predicted to be tomorrow, that will definitely be a factor in what the superintendent decides as far as whether we have a delayed start or a closure tomorrow. And you heard it there. That is Will Jones with Denver Public Schools talking about the record low temperatures and how that is going to impact their decision. Now, Will Jones told me that their hope is that they want to be able to let parents know whether or not there's going to be a delay or a closure by nine o'clock tonight so that you can have an idea before you go to bed. But they have to make that decision by 430 AM tomorrow. So that is the deadline. That is the deadline for most districts. I know many families would like to know sooner, but there is a lot that goes into this. They actually go out and drive the road. They're talking to CDOT, and so they have to do a lot of things before they can make that decision. But their hope is that they can make it a little bit sooner than the decision was made today. Now, I want to toss it over to my colleague, Sean Toll, who is looking into what these temperatures mean for some of our homeless population. Sean? Well, Jen, it's getting cold out, and obviously tonight it's going to get colder. But what that means is there's a lot more people that are going to need shelter tonight. Now, we talked to Catholic Charities earlier. They run the Women's Shelter and the Samaritan House, and they said there was a slight uptick with the number of people they were seeing. But behind me here at the Denver Rescue Mission, they said between all of their shelters, they'd seen 150 more people than they normally would this time of year. So quite the difference because of these cold temps. Now, Catholic Charities also opened their overnight shelters early today to get people out of the cold. And with all these early frigid temps, all the shelters, you know, they're scrambling to find extra stuff to be able to help people out. Definitely seeing this weather um, sooner on in the season has definitely created some problems here at the mission and especially for our guests. Um, speaking of coats and hats and gloves, a lot of our guests don't have that gear yet. Food as well, especially like single served breakfast meals. I know our uh, kitchen staff was saying that that was something that we really needed right now. Now, obviously, there was, you can see there are other people out here trying to provide the homeless with food and with gloves. But the Denver Rescue Mission says if this cold stretch continues later this year, they could definitely see a shortage in warm clothes and food, which could create a lot of problems for them later. Shannon and Ann. All right, Sean, thank you. All right, let's talk transportation now. Are the roads the worst we've ever seen them? No. Are they in good shape? Um, not by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Denver 7's Jason Grenauer spent the day with people digging out from all of this. And Jason, uh, where you are now, the side streets are kind of the problem tonight. They are, and especially over the course of the last hour and a half, the pendulum has kind of swung back from the roads. As Ann said, not the worst we've seen, getting closer back to at least not great. How things have changed just in the last hour and a half, this was right down to pavement. They came through and they shoveled, they salted, then the snow intensity went up, visibility went down, temperatures went down. This is 7th and Washington. You can see just as we were starting to kind of like get down to just black, dark pavement from people just driving by, yeah, now it's all white again. And keep in mind, the residential plows from Denver Public Works will not be going out until at least 3 a.m. until 3 p.m. overnight tonight into tomorrow. Basically, once the snow stops, then they'll do one pass. They are doing with their larger plows multiple passes out there on the main road, so they may be just wet. And good news from Denver police who tweeted out within the hour, they've only gotten two reports of crashes in all of Denver within the last hour. So that is good news for the commute, at least so far. With this more snow, we're going to have to keep an eye on it and we'll continue through throughout the night, at least here in the Denver area. Meanwhile, my colleague Megan Lopez is out in Aurora checking on roads and conditions out there. Megan, what's it look like out in Aurora? 
Oh, Jason, it's actually not so bad on the roads, but they are going to be slick. They are icy, and we have seen people luckily taking it nice and slowly. So it is picking up the wind and definitely dropping down the temperatures. I mean, every single time we get out of this car for the last couple of hours, it's like it feels like it drops quite a bit. Out on 225, you could see nice and slow. We have seen plows. Now, a lot of people decided to close down their shops early today from schools to businesses. All of the city-run dance programs and recs programs closed. The library program also did not run today, but libraries themselves were open. A spokesperson I talked to said that they like to stay open as long as they can, particularly on cold days to give people a place to stay uh, warm and for kids to do something. But they say that they take the safety of their employees very seriously into consideration, and so they were watching the roads closely. The library also organized a shuttle to a local shelter from its central location to help the people who came there with no place to go. A handful of people used it, and that spokesperson I talked to says that the library is just, it's more about, it's more than books. It's out to help people, particularly on really cold days like this. Yeah, we just want to make sure everyone's um, safe and, and warm to the extent that we can help with that. We are really excited to offer a shuttle to the shelter. Um, we know that people need those services and it's it's a cold day. <laughs> we want people to stay warm. We want them to be safe and they can't stay here overnight. Um, and so we want to make sure that people have a place to go. Surprisingly, though, the libraries weren't actually that busy. Most of them closed at 5 today. One of them, the Central Library, stays open to 10, and they were still trying to decide whether they actually wanted to close it early or not. Back out here on the roads, you can see that there's some people that are stuck that are on the side of the road, so that's why you're going to want to make sure you get home as quickly and safely as possible, guys. For now, let's head on over to my uh, colleague Tom Mustin. He's over in Centennial, where people were actually, from what I hear, enjoying the snow. <laughs> They, they certainly have been, Megan. Yeah, we're near Homestead Elementary School. It's been a very popular sledding hill. What was dozens of people earlier today is now down to just, just these two hardy people who are now rolling down the hill, as you see. It's been so cold out here, some of the folks actually left and left their sleds here. And uh, we'll leave this here so they can pick them up. But we want to show you some video we took from earlier this afternoon when there were a lot more folks out here. Uh, students from Cherry Creek High School headed to the hill, they told me, right after hearing the school was canceled at 1.30. At one point, I counted 60 students and a handful of parents out here hitting the hill. And you can see by the video here, they had a lot of fun despite these icy cold temperatures. Now, students told me they were very surprised and happy with this early October snow, but heartbroken they had to miss class. Just snow in general, I really enjoy snow, and it makes me feel like there's a lot of hope for the ski season. So, Wouldn't you rather be in class right now, though? No, no. No, I would not. <laughs> so maybe they weren't that heartbroken, but I can tell you one thing. It is awfully chilly out here. It's 11 degrees right now, icy roads, and these temperatures are expected to drop a lot more as the evening wears on. So right now we have two remaining sledders here out of that, the dozens that were here earlier today. It's been a fun day for these kids, but take it slow when you're out there on those roads again. Very Let's good. send it back to you. You know he's dying to hop on that sled sitting there. Do it. Go, oh, Tom. <laughs> Tom, thank you very Thanks. much. All right, let's talk trains and buses now with Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. Earlier today, RTD actually had to stall the L line because a switch needed to be thought out. So how are the lines faring right now, Russell? Well, the main takeaways tonight, Ann, are that there will be delays on both the bus routes and the trains. So RTD is just asking that you be prepared for that, that you get here early if you can, and that you bundle up because it is bitterly cold out here. We have some video to show you from earlier today. All day long, the buses were running about 30 minutes behind, 15 to 30 minutes behind and the trains were running on average about 15 minutes behind. Not bad considering what we're up against today with Mother Nature. And in fact, most riders gave RTD the benefit of the doubt. They said they did a great job. They were excellent. I came up here and they were shoveling this to make certain that I was able to safely walk up to the platform. So they had their men and their crew pretty much clearing everything, which was great. I don't want a slip trip fall moment. I got right here on time and my train isn't here yet, but I'm crossing my fingers, I'm gonna make it. So the snow beginning to fly again tonight. Be prepared, RTD says, look for some delays for the morning rush, about 30 minutes on the bus routes and 15 minutes on the trains. That's the latest from here in central Denver. Now I'll toss it out to my colleague, Liz Gilardi, who's standing by at DIA where they've had all kinds of issues for two or three days. Liz. 
Oh, they certainly have, and we've been talking with passengers as they're standing in line waiting to rebook their flights. And as you can see, that line right now is getting pretty long. I'm guessing a lot of those people are not too happy, especially by the sound of it. Some airlines are offering the option to uh, do a refund or they're trying to reschedule people on other flights. But in some cases, that means not getting out until tomorrow or maybe even a couple of days. We've just been hearing some people on the phone calling friends, loved ones saying, hey, not quite sure when I'm getting out of here. But here's the latest numbers from DIA 466 to delays and more than 540, more than 540 flights canceled. And maybe that's why the airport actually seemed a little more quiet today by those security checkpoints just because of all those flights that were canceled. DIA has been concerned about the additional snow moving in this afternoon and also some of the wind, especially with visibility issues out here. So the focus has really been on trying to make sure those runways are cleared, especially during the day when they had a little bit of a break in the weather. The sun was actually out at one point and it does take a tremendous effort with more than 200 pieces of equipment being used to clear the runways and travelers we talked to earlier today weren't quite sure when they would be able to get back home, but they were trying to stay positive, especially a woman with a two month old baby who we spoke with. We don't know. We're trying to find another flight home. So yeah, <laughs> how's that looking? Not good. <laughs> get out are ranging anywhere from one to two hours. DIA is hoping operations will return back to normal at some point, but no word exactly on when that could happen quite yet. We're going to toss it over to Jason Luber and Jason. I know our drive in on Pena Boulevard actually wasn't too bad this morning, but I am worried about the commute home. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different there, Liz, as you're going to be making your way out because that snow is really, really changing the way we're driving out there. Take a look at the map again. If you would, we can go back to the the, uh, uh, the map and you can see the conditions out to the eastern plains. I wanted to start with the uh, conditions out on I-70 out by Deer Trail. Take a look from the camera on the westbound side. I-70 is shut down right now and that's because of a nasty crash between Deer Trail and the Bennett area. So we are going to have it closed down for a while longer. This is what the conditions look like on the side streets out near DIA. Tower and 56 snow covered roads. It's much like this also on Pena Boulevard. Down through the Denver Tech Center we have snow cover now going across both lanes both on the north and southbound side. The great thing about this drive is that we are seeing very light traffic, whether it's going to be the north side, the east side, the west side of town. That's the one thing that's going to help us out, but we are going to see these very slick roads like up in Boulder, and I'm really concerned about the gap project down south. We'll keep an eye on that not only later this evening, but also continuing tomorrow morning, and I'll be here at 430 to get you through these roads. All right, thank you, Jason. Thanks, very Jason. Much. All right, Mike's tracking the snow and the record-breaking cold snap. That's when we come back.